Buch at uh, how to plot. Uh, basically, I want to look at how to get the convenient scale when you are plot a graph in physics practical. Today, I want to use these two columns and they are practical values. And the question we want to deal with is a question whereby the intercepts are not required. So, let me have my question. So how do we do it? 
Um, this is how we do it as long as we are dealing with the question having no intercepts in it. Uh, so let me show you how we budget for this uh, paper of ours or for these axes. Like for vertical axis, this one here, vertical interval, vertical interval, I want to know each gap is represented by which value of the second square here. Yeah. So we get the largest minus the smallest divided by 10. Here, whenever you are budgeting for vertical interval, you get the largest value within that column minus the smallest within this column, then you divide it by 10 gaps, which means we are dividing, we are planning for 10 uh, intervals. Now, uh, you will always get your calculator and then substitute. So the largest is this, minus smallest, divided by 10, and you put it in your calculator, you have uh, 0 0.196. That is your interval for this big gap. But always this value we get, this value we get as our interval is not convenient, is not uh, appropriate to be used here. And we can't round off like in mathematics. Uh, there is a way we make it appropriate. So, which means I will show you how can we get appropriate uh, interval here. And then that interval, the interval get it means it is a value representing this gap, this gap, this gap. What about one the small gap? One smallest gap here. What will be its value? So, um, I will show you that one there after having got the correct interval. Um, this interval, first of all, it's not convenient. You will always do it like this. The value reach here will always not be convenient. Not until you get a convenient interval from the table I'm going to show you. Um, let me also deal with it. So which means here, we have and there is a value I'm going to look for, which is convenient interval here. I'll put it this side. Um, then we look at horizontal. What about budgeting for this line? What is it? A value representing this interval, this interval. Horizontal interval. Uh, will be given also uh, by horizontal interval we are talking about, we are planning for y. Then vertical interval automatically we are planning for this value t squared. So it is largest minus smallest. Then when we are budgeting for this axis, we divide by 8. But when we are budgeting for this axis, we always get a uh, largest, smallest divided by 10. And this one, it is for a question where you have seen that they are not asking for intercepts. So, uh, we are going to have it as when you get in the biggest in the other, it is this, this one here, minus the smallest, divided by 8. What I'm going to have, when you put it in a calc, you have 0 0.0625. That's what you have. So this is an interval, it is this gap here, but this value we get uh, after having it divided, it's not convenient. This is an interval. This is a, a value representing each gap here, each gap here, each gap here, but it is not convenient. Uh, I will going to show you how uh, physics teachers came up with an idea of always obtaining convenient intervals using a table. Um, this is the uh, meaning that I'll write my interval here. My interval, I'm going to write it here. But uh, allow me use a certain table, which will always guide you, and you'll be the one to develop it always, not any other person. Now, the table is... The table you can use here. use 
this part if you can see it properly. intervals the ones we take as correct always our interval when we are choosing our intervals uh, the physics teachers realize that the accurate intervals or convenient intervals whenever you are de dealing with a practical uh, scale the correct interval should always have in them either a 1 or either a 1 or a 2 or a 5 so you are, whenever you are to have this value uh, as your correct interval now from these ones where the key the, determ the one determining the rest of the others now they said that now how do, what about the others because they always may not get a scale of 1, a 2, a 5 there are other smaller value. So when you get this, you divide by 10, you get 0 0.1. I'm saying this one, divide it by 10. Not any other value, but by 10, you can get this. What about here? When you divide it, you get 0 0.2. When you get 5 divided by 10, you get 0 0.5. Like that. You can get other numbers upwards. What if this one here? Get this one, divide by 10. This one will be 10, you get 0 0.01. What about this one? You get 0 0.02. Get this one divided by 10, 0 0.05. You can get more others. What if I divide this one by 10? That's how we generate a such a value. 0 0.01. Uh, this is 0 0.002. This one, when you get this one divided by 10 also, 0 0.005. So that's how we can obtain these smaller values. But you can also from this one here, down ones, from this value, down ones, you can also get bigger values. In case your scale will give you a big value. Um, this value now when you are coming down ones, we multiply. Like here, you can say I have been divided by 10. But from this one, down ones, I'm going to be multiplying by 10. That's how we generate that table. Uh, so when I get 1 times 10, I get a 10. 2 times 10, I get 20. 5 times 10, I get 50. Then this 10 I have obtained, again multiplied by 10, I get 100. Uh, this times 10, I get 100. This times 10, I get 500. I can get many more. The answer I have obtained, again multiplied by 10, I can get 1,000. Uh, this by times 10, I can get 2,000. This one, I can get 5 watts, 1,000. So you can see that uh, you may get a scale which is smaller of smaller values or you can get a scale of bigger values. But all in all, the key is this one here. As long as you know a 1, a 2, a 5. Then here, going upward, keep dividing this by 10, this by 10, this by 10. Then what you get divided by 10, you get this. This by 10, you can generate uh, many more. Now, how does this table help us to get the convenient interval? Because we have seen that when I got the largest minus the smallest divided by 10 on vertical, I got this value. And this value is not convenient for the plotting. Then also on horizontal, I got this one as the coat, as the, the interval, or a value presenting each gap I have marked here. But it is not convenient. And the convenient intervals lie within this table we have generated. So you just look at this value and see where it lies. We have this row, this row, this row, this row, this row, this row, and the other row. This is a row, a row, a row, a row. We consider rows. So look at where this value lies. Because always there is this gap. Between this and this, there is that gap. Between this and this, there is this gap. Between this and this, there is this gap. There is this gap. Always like that. So from the last one, we come here. This is the next. From this one, it is followed by this. Followed by this, followed by this. This one is followed by this. 
I think that. So followed by this, followed by this, followed by this. That's how they uh, they are bigger than each other. So right away, come here and see. Come here and see. Compare in which way to be ready. Look at this number. Is a zero point, then this is a, a natural number. This is not a zero, it's a natural number. So, uh, zero point, a natural number. Come to these range, uh, to these rows, and you see where there is that format. I think it is, it, it is within this row here. Because zero, a zero. A point, a point. A natural number, a natural number. So, as long as it, it, it is uh, from this value here, from here to here, check whether it lies from it, it lies within this range here now since we have realized that it is within check is it within this gap here or is it within this gap or is it beyond this it is your judgment after knowing the row where it lies then you check which gap this is this or the other uh, when you look at it it is bigger than this. Why? Because there are these other values behind. We don't just round it like the math. But it is smaller than this. The reason being, this is a just a one. Moreover, this one is what? A two. And a two is bigger than one. So meaning that this value here lies here. Lies between those two values. Not so. It lies here. So if that is the case, if it lies here, you always take this bigger interval next to it because it means this value is within here so it is between this one and the other one so you take the other value after it from here we go to this value but after it is what we take as what as the, our interval so our interval here is approximately to 0 0.2 this is what is what this is what is convenient we shall not consider this as our interval instead our interval this one here. It is a value representing this whole gap, this whole gap, this whole gap, this whole gap, this whole gap. Uh, here we are talking about now vertical because here I'm still dealing with the vertical. So that is 0.2 presence here, 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 here. It is for vertical. Then let us see for horizontal. Come to your table and see the arrangement. From this starting value, like this one's having such this one's come and you see a number arranged in that format. A zero point, a zero, then a natural number like right here. Come on, you see, for this one to check. Um, compare, a zero, a zero. A point, point. A zero, a zero. Then a natural number, a natural number. So meaning that from there, this one lies within this row here. This figure here, it is within this row. So if that is the case, we let us see it is between which number and which number. Is it between, is it here? Is it within this gap? Or it is beyond this? And if it is beyond here, it means it is between this interval and this interval. Because from this interval, the next acceptable interval is this one, which means if a value is exceeding this one is here, it implies that it is between this interval and this interval. And whenever a value is between two intervals, we take the other interval behind it. So let us see. When you look at this value here, this one, this is a six. This is a six. So you can see this is a one. This is B. This is just a two, it is not here. This is a 2, this is a 5, this is a, a 6 instead. So it lies in this side here. It is beyond this gap. It is beyond here. If it is beyond here, it means it is between this value and the other value here. Implying that we shall not, uh, we shall ignore this one and write this interval beyond it on the other convenient interval. So uh, my, my interval is approximately to 0.1. So we shall not take this as our interval, but this is the convenient interval from the table of convenient intervals, right? That is it. Okay. So, where do I use this interval? Uh, where do I use this interval? It helps us to get these values here, which we are going to put on this axis, which we are going to put here on these marks. Those intervals is what they are going to help us. 
so that they are going to help us. Now, I should. I'm going to, to talk about the starting point. A value to put here on this first mark, and a value to put here on this first mark. We call this value starting value. Starting value. Because it is the one to start this mark way upwards. Even this one is the starting value because it is going to start from here, goes the other side. And doesn't mean that it will always put a zero there. Uh, a zero is put there due to some reasons you will be knowing, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you shall put here a zero. As long as the question you are dealing with is a question where intercepts are not required. Um, then, what am I going to do? Uh, from there, remember this one which you have got for horizontal. This is an interval. It is a value representing 10 smallest boxes. Because within this gap, there are 10 smallest, what? smallest boxes on your graph paper. Implying that if I want to get now my scale, my scale, that is the value of one small box. My scale, it means one uh, smallest, smallest box will be this interval, this interval divided by the smallest boxes which are within that interval. So it will be 0 0.01, that is my scale. That is my scale. So even here, uh, this one is for the horizontal place because in between there, there are 10 smallest what? boxes from here to here. Because each interval is this one, 0 0.1. Each gap is 0 0.1. So if I want to get the value for one smallest box, then I need to get 10 which are within the other interval. And I divide this interval by those 10 smallest boxes. Now for vertical, the scale, this is interval. Now the scale, the scale, that is the scale, it means that the scale, one smallest square of your graph paper, or at any point, one smallest box, uh, will be equal to this interval divided by 10. So in a calculator, you will obtain this. This is the, the scale. It means it is a value representing one smallest box on the vertical axis. This is the scale. It is the value representing one smallest square on the horizontal. So this is interval. This is the, the value for one smallest box. This is interval. This is the value for one smallest box on those axes, as I mentioned with them before. Now, the value to put here, the starting value on this vertical axis, the starting value here, you come to these to these values here. Come to these values. Look at the smallest value there. What is it? It is this one. On these values of t squared, t squared, t squared, so we shall put values of t squared. The smallest is this. Now the number to, to put here. To this first mark should be smaller than this. Should be smaller than this. But slightly smaller, the difference should not be very big. Slightly smaller. So, slightly smaller. So, I'm putting 1.8 as my starting point because I know this 1.8 is smaller than this two. Okay? Then, uh, how do I get to the next value here? Remember our interval, our interval on vertical is 0 0.2. So from here, to get, to get the value here, I add the interval. I add the interval. What you do, put this one in a carriage 1.8. To get the next value, you add the interval plus 0 0.2 is our interval. You press, you will have 2.0. Then on this value again add the interval. So when you have already put the other in the carriage, you keep pressing your carriage. Then next is 2.2. Next, that is 
2.4 next, that is 2.6 next, that is 2.8 next, that is 3.0 next, that is 3.2. Uh, you continue, for me, my board, you see it is very small. You continue until you see that the other maximum value is covered within this what? Uh, on, on this axis. And um, then, what about here? How do I get the starting point, a value to be put here as the starting value on this axis? How do I put it? You need to come to the column of y, because values which are going to be there, they are y values. y, as measured by experiment, I'm not saying this is y axis like in mathematics. It's not what I'm saying. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this value here. I'm going to check this one. Which one is the smallest value in this column? When you look at and compare, the smallest in this column is this one. So, the value to be put here must be smaller than this. For example, I'm putting 0 0.4. 0 0.4 is being less than this. However, there is a condition. There is a condition always you put. This value here you put here as a starting point must be divided by the scale for one box must be divided by this scale without any remainder. Without any remainder. What do I mean? Uh, this starting value must be divided by the scale on that axis and the answer you get has no decimal point in it. That is the condition. So there are two conditions you always you should follow. The value to be put here must be slightly smaller than this. And again, this very value must be divisible by this, the scale on that axis. Because we have seen that our scale of one smallest box on this axis is 0 0.02. That is the scale of one smallest box here. So meaning, get this divided by this and you see whether you will get a number which is not having a decimal point in it. Likewise here, the value to be put here must be smaller than this small value within this column, but again it must be divisible by the scale, because the scale we got here on the horizontal was 0 0.01, the value for the smallest box. So get this divided by this and you see if you get a value without two and then decimal point in it. That is the foundation. Let me walk there and clear. Starting point has two conditions. One, you come to the column of those values you are plotting. It must be smaller, slightly smaller than this small value within that column. And again, it must be divisible by the, the scale. The value for one per smallest box for one, one smallest box, that is what we call a scale, without any remainder or any decimal point in it. Like for example, when I get 80.8, which is my starting value, divided by this scale of mine, uh, 0 0.02, I'm getting 90, a value 90 without any decimal in it. Try your one and see. Okay, that is good. And then how do I get the next value here? This is the starting point. But my interval is 0 0.1, which means I'll keep adding 0 0.1. I add 0 0.1 on the next, on the next. So which means when I add here 0 0.1, I'll get 0 0.5 here. When on 0 0.5, add the interval, still, it is 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, then uh, 0 0.9, then 1.0. So you keep putting them in that format. That's how we get these other values, right? That is how we we put it. Okay, that's how we put it. So let me put a So condition, the value to be the starting point must be slightly smaller than the small value on that axis, which we are considering. 
and it must be divisible by the scale. Which scale? The value for one of the smallest box like we have mentioned there. Then this one here, also the starting point, must be slightly smaller than this. And also, it must be divisible by the scale of the value. This value for one smallest box is what I'm calling my scale. Okay, not the interval of police, not the interval of the, the scale. Okay, that's right. Uh, however, some of you will have very many questions. Yes, Master, you have put these values here. But the values for, from the table for t squared are having three digits. Each term is having three digits. One, two, three. 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 Why? Why haven't you uh, put also three digits here, three digits here, three digits here? Uh, for me, I wanted to avoid very many figures written here. Because you find some students have a big handwriting and they will put very many figures here and you will find it. Some others are not visible, uh, others are not clear. So what? why do I put two digits? For these values of t squared, yet in the table there are three, that's what I want to tell you. Uh, for me, I have come to my interval. My interval has how many digits? 0 0.2. And to get, to get from the starting point to go to the next value, I will be adding 0 0.2, which is my interval having two digits. But then from this to this, I added 0 0.2, which is having two digits. So since my interval on this axis has two digits, so I made also the starting point to have two digits, such that when I add two digits on the other two digits, the answer I get has two digits, two digits, two digits, two digits, like my interval. Even here, that's the same thing. I did not put some other two zeros here, like this one here. I put only a value having two digits. Reason being, my interval on this axis is 0 0.1. We saw it is 0 0.1. Implying that uh, 0 0.1, there are two digits. There is a 0 and a 1. Those are two digits. So, since I will keep adding on the starting point, the interval having two digits, that's why I made my value to have two digits. Simple. Because I never wanted to have very many values written on the axis. Confusing. I get what I'm saying. So, I just want my digits. For these decimal points, my digits has how many? Two digits. Let my starting point to have also two digits. Here also on the vertical axis, I saw my interval was having two digits. And I know I keep accumulating the interval to get the next value. So that's why I chose also my starting point to be two digits. Then my starting point had to be slightly smaller than this value on the vertical, but it must be divisible by the scale without a decimal point in the answer of obtaining. Likewise here is what I have done. Yes, that's what I have done. Okay. Um, that is it exactly. So, uh, I can also, I have another way on how you can get the starting point. I have another way on how you can get the starting point. I have another way because here we have said it, it has to be smaller than this, like on a vertical, smaller than this, okay? And it has to be divisible by what? By the scale of that axis, the scale I'm meaning the value presenting one smallest box here, which I got at 0 0.02. Even here, that's what I said. Minding that we are dealing with a question where intercepts are not required, yes, that is true. But I have another way. If uh, you are really ready for learning, I can give it to you also, if you don't mind. Let me hope you have uh, got this. Today we are not going to plot, no? We are just for the scale. I'm not in a rush. And the other day, I'll come and plot these same values. Since we shall have known how to get a scale, you will revise how the scale, scale I have got it. Uh, you can also try the other numbers you have. 
to get a scale, you see whether you have the same scale as the teacher. And then plotting will be another day we shall plot and calculate some values. So and also this table works very well. It is easy to generate. Table of convenient intervals. It helps us to know which correct interval employed which will lead us to a correct scale. Your scale. Or if you have obtained this term as your scale, this is the one you need. 
or if you have obtained this term, there is a 1. Or if it is this one, it is a 1. Or this one, it is a, a 10, but there is a 1. There is a 1 also here. There is, as long as it has a 1 in it, what, what will be my starting value on my axis? Hey, by the way, like for this number, we saw that he, on the horizontal, our scale has a 1 in it. So, what would be my starting value? My starting value, I will choose any number to put any, no con as long as it has the one in it, you choose any number. Starting value, value, use any number. Use any number. Use any number of your trees. It could be odd number or an even number. Choose any number as long as it is slightly smaller. Like for this axis, now let me consider for this. Um, our, our scale had the one in it and the axis was this one horizontal. So, meaning that my starting value since here my scale had the one in it, I was supposed to choose any number as long as it is slightly smaller than it, this one here. The, small, the smallest value within this column. This value must be any number, but it's slightly smaller than this. As long as in my scale on this axis, you see, the way you, you can see, had a one in it. That is what you do. Then, um, case two. Uh, if the scale has a, a two in it, what do I do? If it has a 2 in it, what do I do? Examples. So, a, a, B, 0 0.2, 0 0.0, 2, it is or a 2 or a 20 or a 2,000, 200 or 2,000, you will find such a scale. What do I do? Starting value, starting value, use even, use even, let me put it in a capital, use even number. Must be no even numbers. Like for example, my scale here. My scale on vertical, my scale has a 2 in it. So my starting value must be an even number. You can see 1.8 is an even number. But this starting point still must be smaller than this one within this column. It must be smaller than this, but since my scale had a 2 in it, then this number must be even number. It, it works. And case if, if my scale has a 5, has a 5 in it. Examples, maybe 0 0.5 is your scale or 0 0.05 is your scale or 0 0.05 uh, uh, or a 5 itself or 50 or 500 etc. What will be my starting value? Hmm? For example, what will be your starting value? Then, a starting value, starting value, use n, use n, n number, n number, ending with a zero or a five. As long as it is having a five, if the scale has a five in it, then the starting value must be any number of the But that number should be ending with what? A zero or a five. Do you know any, any number? It could be zero point two, maybe zero. 
depending on the nature of the values but that value should always be this should also be slightly smaller than the number in the column you are taking so that is another way on how to get the starting value that is another way on how to get the starting value and I'm meaning when you are dealing with a question whereby intercepts are not required Thank you so much for listening. Next time we shall see how to plot and